Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a boonton. It's quite a long time ago since I got another boonton, so pretty cool to get a new one. This one is an RX meter type 250A and the measurement range is 0 0.5 to 250 megahertz. Wow, look at that. So it will measure. On this point you put on the device you want to measure. It can be a capacitor or a resistor or whatever you want to measure really. And then you can you dial in the value in picofarads on this dial here. And then you dial in the resistor part of it. Look at that. This really, really nice meter. The way that they made made it mechanically with this uh, indicator here. I kind of like that a lot. Isn't that really cool? So I'm going to go and adjust this for 100 ohms because I just put in, see, a 100 ohm resistor. And then I should be able to fine tune everything here for a dip in case this is working. Also, look at the way they made the frequency indication or setting and everything. We're using those two. Let's see if I can get some light here. So that will be the two views of the different frequency ranges. So frequency here, I can slowly dial in the frequency. So now we are in the, what, 21, right? So 21 to 48 is the range. So that will be 21 and then do, 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 all the way to 48, right? Oops, actually 250, isn't that funny? <laughs> 48 here, and okay, we can dial it to 50. This is like, yeah, a little bit of funny. But anyway, see, this one, this thing here the, about the ranges, I find really, really cool. See, if I dial this, oops, it appears here. Again. Oh. Clonk. Isn't that just fantastic? And, and now, how about that? Isn't this just, have you ever seen this before? So that is now the 100 to 250 and then, ooh, look at that. And then it appears up here. I really like the, this kind of user-friendly indications and now we're back here. So what I will do, I'll go for the lowest possible frequency and I'll put it in the middle, 0 0.5. So that will be 0.75, right? So this is the lowest frequency for my resistor and then I will see what happens. There will be a tuning. So this is the detector tuning. Uh, I think this is also where you fine tune the difference in the uh, two oscillators. This one is actually controlling two oscillators uh, in kind of par parallel. One is uh, 100 kilohertz higher than the other one, and they need to match. So I believe this is the fine tuning of that point. And uh, so one is the mixer, and it uh, and one is the test frequency, and it goes uh, in and out of each side of the bridge, and one goes to the mixer, and so is uh, the different is 100 kilohertz. And this is what goes to the amplifiers and detectors and stuff that goes to the meter. So that is how, um, how they made all the detection circuit always run on the same uh, 100 kilohertz. So that is a lot easier for them. Um, yeah, let's try and find the cable. So I am ready with the cable. I powered up mains. I did check on the rear. There's a label. It says, okay, maybe I want to show you guys this, guys, this. See, there's a label that says this is wired for 
Europe mains voltage, so that is good. Also, I find this knob here a little bit funny. This is clearly some sort of a modification. So what exactly is this doing? There's no text, nothing here. So I just choose to put this in the middle. <laughs> what else can I do, right? So let's measure a little bit on the frequency generator. Here's what I did. I put it in the 110 to 250 uh, range, and then I'm dialing around the frequencies. And I put a 100 ohm, yeah, actually two 100 ohms resistors like this um, to the spectrum analyzer. And of course, always an attenuator. We're not gonna break anything here. And I see a very, very weak signal, and then here, whoops, goes away. And then it comes back again, and here we see a little bit of overtones and stuff. But anyway, it seems like it is working somehow. Let's try the next... The next range is 48 to 110. And then I can dial again. And see, here I got a really nice and powerful signal that is nice and stable and it is actually also let's just see peak what this is 60 point what almost 61 right look at that so it's almost 61 so they know what they're doing these guys right i'm not surprised but and that is the next range here is 28 so let's just see if we got 28, peak, and 28. And again, I can dial this around, blah, 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 blah. And all here is fine. So let's take, oh, it's different there. It's really tough. So this is nine to 28. Let's put this for 11, peak. 11, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all in all, it's oscillator is really working. And we should also, yeah, the same here. What I could do is now change the f uh, stop frequency to like 20, so we get, see, a nice peak. So 4.9, look at that. Let's put this for, five peak and it's five isn't this amazing i think this unit is from 1954 right and it's still a super accurate <laughs> isn't this just amazing so this is the lowest range and i set it to uh, 500 so this is of course the the main output but then there's a second harmonic. It's quite powerful, the second harmonic. And this is a classical uh, for tube stuff. It is a lot more powerful on the second harmonic. And then you're probably going to see the third harmonic really, really low. But second harmonics is always quite high on tube gear. I have now increased the span. So we can see all the way to 3 megahertz. And I'm still in the... 0.5 to 1 megahertz range so that will be this one right so now I dial around with the oscillator frequency and let's have a look what happens with the harmonics so there's obviously a filter that's very effective from here right and then it goes up and that will be a point where the third harmonic is actually more powerful than the second so that is the harmonics. So now we're ready to take off, uh, off uh, the lid. Now of course we need to take out the three screws here. I didn't need to take out that one, I guess. And and of course all the other top screws. On some module uh, models you only need to loosen those four screws here because there is a bottom bracket that's kind of um, fit to the top lid from the bottom side. But on this model, 
as you can see here. There's a thread in the top plate, and the, you, so you need to take out the entire screw. Right? So now we can get in and have a look. I saw on, on another video about those indicators. They manually added some lines before they engraved the wheels. And what you see here is the, the thin, thin lines. That's actually hand made markings before they did the engravings. Isn't that just cool? So they are hand engraved or manually engraved each of them for highest possible accuracy. Isn't this just nice? So we are looking a lot more inside this uh, unit. It seems like the entire case is welded together in one piece like this. So the only way to get in is kind of take away the front plate or lift up the entire units and it's going to be a quite a big operation. Also, how you get in here and service these items, you disconnect the connectors and then you can actually lift up. I think they will fit through the hole here. Otherwise, how do you put them in, right? And then there's uh, like connectors on everything, so I guess you should be able to get this out, or maybe this wire, where's the connector? Okay, yeah, the connector is in here. And that one goes actually through this hole. So yeah, you could lift up the um, amplifier. So this is the 100 kilohertz amplifier system. And the signals for this um, to the meter and all that stuff actually goes in here and the, it's just rerouted to the other connector. So this way they save connectors. I pulled out um, some of the tubes from the power supply to have a look at them. They're actually a little bit specially, or oh, they're a little bit special, especially the 6H6. That one is uh, something you don't really see that much, so I took them out. And what do you know? This is a current regulator for the filaments. It says here 6H6, so this is 6 volt, 600 milliamps, and it looks a lot like it's just a bulb or a filament, and that's actually what it is. So when you pull more and more current through this, you heat up the, uh, the filament in here, and then it changes its uh, parameters, and this way it acts as a constant current source uh, for the filaments. I don't actually understand why this is a smart thing because one of uh, what if one of the f uh, filaments in one of the tubes uh, break uh, in the system that this one is supplying filaments to? Uh, yeah, you're gonna see the voltage raised a lot on the other tubes, and this way you're gonna fry all, all the other tubes. So I don't, I'm not super fan of this. And uh, this is the voltage regulator tube for the high voltage and normally they grow really really black because of uh, deposit materials and all that but look at this it is so nice and new this reveals um, this unit wasn't really used that much and this is the rectifier tube also looks like it's brand new they also turns quite black and uh, and dirty in both of the ends. And yeah, this one also looks like brand brand new. So yeah, I got a really unused uh, unit. So this will be the feed through filters for um, for the two oscillator tubes. This uh, is of course the oscillator, and it's divided by a big wall here in the middle and those two oscillators run uh, at a 100 kilohertz um, offset so this modification here with this pot meter that is connected to the anode supply of I believe this is the mixer oscillator and this is the main oscillator so the main oscillator is always powered but then this is the anode supply 
for the for the mixer oscillator, right? So this way you can crank down, or this is uh, ground, see? This is connected to ground. So that means you can actually turn off the anode supply completely to the injection. And this way, use this uh, unit as a signal generator. And then all you get out here will be the oscillator. So <laughs> I think this is a, a funny mod. And instead of having a switch that will uh, probably create problems when you switch this on and off, they just added a pot meter, so the idea about this pot meter is to have it fully on or fully off, of course. So now I've been playing a little bit around with this funny voltage uh, divider pot meter for for the injection oscillator. And uh, see, so here is a full crank up of the oscillator here. And then we'll see, we got this uh, super good reaction on the 100 ohm resistor that I'm measuring and then we got uh, 155 that is actually a little bit too low as far as I re uh, remember right and then we just crank down the voltage to zero if we crank the this down there we have no injection right and if there is no injection there's also no signal here but of course there will be uh, this is injection to the mixer right so there will still be signal going to the resistor. So now you have a signal generator. That's all you've got. Don't you just love the glow of voltage regulator tubes? They shine really, really nice. I don't think I'm able to take a photo or video at least of this, but I do believe I can see a tiny little glow in the current regulator tube uh, you see to the left. So now I'll probably take a night photo of it and see if I can make it uh, visual. So this is the 100 kilohertz filter and amplifier circuit. Took it out from here. It's quite easy with the connectors uh, down here and all that, but there's another connector in here and there's no way I can stick in my hand here and get access to this and and unscrew it I don't know how to do that it's not gonna be easy but the wire here is the coax cable here is actually long enough so you can just take this entire unit doesn't look off much just the three resonant circuit and the tubes like that but when you put it like this now it's easy to service everything we can see all the different coils and stuff that it consists of and everything here looks in mint condition it's beautiful work so that is just great so this is a closer look on the power supply and of course if you think a lot of this look a lot like HP equipment. <laughs> they even use the HP power supply or the transformator here. I, I really think they're using a lot of parts and uh, all the assembly methods, uh, all the way that they it, it do everything. It looks more or less like Boonton was in fact a HP company or, an, or a branch or something like that. So if we look at the voltage selector it's also where we reveal um, the fuse uh, sizes and the fuses uh, neatly placed on the front there are a few things about that let me see if i can put it upside down so we, oh i don't want to put it on the tubes maybe i should just hold it like this right so look they're using really nice high quality resistors with cooling uh, or thermal transfer to the chassis absolutely brilliant way to do stuff there's a really fun thing that i found here so this is the mains input those two wires that will be the mains and then it goes to the voltage regulator tube look this is mains input but in this socket there is a short circuit pin 
between this pin and I believe it is this black wire up here that goes to the voltage selector and then up to the front panel to the on off switch and the fuse and then back to the mains transformator so the idea about this uh, about mains going through this socket doesn't really have a function uh, other than uh, safety so that means uh, if you accidentally move remove this tube or if it's not mounted when you try to power this unit up nothing bad's gonna happen so this is a super nice uh, safety feature because Imagine there is no voltage regulator uh, tube mounted. The anode voltage is just going to skyrocket, uh, and and you can could possibly uh, damage capacitors or circuits uh, that was not designed for the uh, top voltage. So that is why they did this. Really, really neat. So it's a beautiful power supply. Super easy to access everything. You can easily follow all the different wires. I, I really like the, the way that they designed this. So when you're trying to pull this unit apart, remember I talked about the amplifier that was in here, the 100 kilohertz amplifier. There's a coax cable that goes through this hole and this coax cable is connected to this one. The only way you can get the amplifier unit all the way up and away is of course to take this coax cable out and there's no way you can stick in your hand here and do this so you need to unscrew all the front screws and tilt down the entire front panel unit or this is yeah this is kind of the entire machine in one complete assembly that just folds neatly down put some soft under here so it's not standing on meters or on knobs and stuff and uh, now we can see a lot more what is going on we can also pull out the, the connector through this hole so they thought about all these things that's normally quite annoying everything here is made really really beautiful there's a, a few things that I see immediately like double shielded so there's actually a shield on top of a shielded cable that is uh, quite unique and this one is like a this is a TNC not a BNC so they're much more tight when it comes to shielding so that is of course uh, super important with the in uh, this is the bridge injection uh, yeah and this is the bridge output for the amplifier and then it will drive the meter we uh, we are this uh, cable some uh, models also uh, got a fuse on the meter but not the this model look on the look at the bulb this is a really, really funny type. I can't remember I've seen this before. Really, really old kind of style. Um, I, I'm not super happy about the way the handle is mounted. So that is like just stick it in and bend this. Is this really good enough? As you can see, this unit is so heavy. They broke the handle. And there's actually steel in here to make it... I don't know, that is not so good. Maybe I got another handle, so maybe I can fix this. And <laughs> look at the mechanics. Of course, this is where all the weight is. Everything is made in as thick and as monster as possible. And why would you do this so thick and stable? That is, of course, to, be, to, to have accurate and stable, reliable measurements. Because now nothing is moving or bending or anything. Remember, this unit is, what, 60-some years old. And it still hits the line within a half a line width. When I compare the real thing to what this unit says. So it is that accurate. And when it comes to frequencies and everything again, it is just insanely accurate. And it is built the same way here in the dual cased uh, oscillator stuff it is like everything is just this thick and this massive one cast aluminium unit i'm looking so much forward to open this unit so i can show you all the cool details so now we are deep inside the unit i took off both of the shields and now we can see this is the bridge tube and this is the back side 
of the bridge tube system. Look at all the coax cables, uh, they really mean serious business here. I believe this is the filament. It goes directly to the bulb, the on-off bulb. And that is just a beautiful bulb that is in the socket there. Let's look at the mechanics. So this is the, the dial for the resistance. Just fantastic gearings and the way that they make this stop. See, all those are loose. And when you go all the way to the end, see they just line up. And then gunk. No more. So we got two mechanical inputs to the into this case. And that one. And they're geared. And then we have a capacitor in here for this one. And also the other side, this is the capacity readout, that, that dial here. As you can see here, this one is geared 10 and 10 and 10, right? And this is all done. With, oh, it's difficult to see with all the cables in the way. But then there's a much different gearing system here. And again, they copy the same kind of stop feature and also both of those geared non-geared or low and high geared inputs they also go into the oscillator case i don't know if we're able to get in there because i need to disassemble everything to get into that that is a little bit annoying it is in here behind this somewhere I can see the gearbox is in here and whatnot. Yeah. I don't think we are able to get in there. That's a little bit annoying. What is that? Hmm. Now we are looking inside the two oscillators. So this will be the fine tuning of the oscillator frequency. So that one is connected to the big wheel here and it goes into the two capacitors. Look at the way this is made. So this extra rod here on the top connects to the other one instead of having a ceramic rod all the way through because they don't want a hole in the two chambers and they, so they really wanted to make it this much more difficult this is like a million times more complicated but anyway let's see if we can get some light in here They just track absolutely perfect. There's no slip slap or anything. Everything is of course made with uh, anti backslash uh, gears. So when you dial the ranges, remember all those ranges here. So what is going to happen then? That is a full change of all the resonant uh, parts in there. They just spin around in there. It is beautiful. Also, I think we can maybe see that. I don't know if I can show you guys. This camera just really makes my day today. All the parts is made completely symmetric so that everything just lines up symmetric oh, i just love it and that will be the two oscillator tubes and again look how symmetric the whole construction is made brilliant and yes it's not that thick of course this is 
the wall in here is a lot thinner but anyway it is oh, quite massive it's all the way in here like three centimeters in here before it gets thin and it just don't get thin here it is very very solid construction and it's just beautiful in any possible way yeah and of course when you add the proper shielding you get a real good connection all the way around here and all these screws <sighs> 